Hello and welcome back. Today we will be doing a starting steps video as Greece with the intention of forming Byzantium as quickly as possible. You can do this by going into the cultures tab, clicking on the nation formation section, and going for forming Byzantium. You will need all of the highlighted territory, unlike a lot of nation formations which only require part. We have to have all of it. It is an empire level tag and this will be the goal for the run and so this will inform what we are just trying to do in terms of the starting steps. For the starting steps videos we are going to be doing a lot of things um namely first off is we're going to be using the corn laws to reform our economy a little bit in terms of our economic laws although we start pretty good uh here in greece in terms of our laws overall we do want to get a little bit more focused in more dialed in um we will also be using going early industrialization efforts uh specifically we're going to be focusing on the resource industries and we are going to be trying to increase the investment pool as much as possible the name of the game truly for all this is going to be moving from being merchant guild owned you see here shopkeepers which contribute five percent to their dividends to the investment pool we are going to be wanting to switch to being capitalist owned as quickly as possible which will contribute 20 percent of their dividends to the investment pool more on that later um, we will also be talking about an expansion plan for greece that i think is quite robust that centers around trying to accumulate interest in a variety of areas uh, we are going to declare our interest here uh, in indonesia at the very start because you can only declare one interest at a time but if you take a state in a region you will get a free interest and so we will be doing that as well as trying to get adjacencies to various markets in order to help ourselves to trade before we uh join austria's market um secondly or further uh we are going to be wanting to fight kebab at least once in this episode um specifically we want to take thessaly and then move our capital there thessaly has a lot of arable land and so this is a good spot for the capital it has the most arable land out of all the byzantium land we need to take and we will probably also release albania for our expansion plan we're going to be starting with taking montenegro so this will allow us to snake a line directly towards austria which brings us to daddy diplomacy so what we will want to do uh early on is we're going to want to join austria's market uh either by becoming a protectorate or joining their customs union i believe joining the customs union in the long run is a little bit better uh and that it will be less consistent and we will be going for the protectorate route but not immediately uh very important that we don't do it immediately because we want to provoke the corn laws event to give us a market liberal landowner first we'll talk about that in a minute but the reason for joining the market here is there's twofold there's two reasons first of all in the austrian market there's already a ton of buy and sell orders what this will do by having a lot of buy and sell orders it will smooth out the overall prices of our goods uh that we are going to be using for all of our inputs and such uh which is going to have a positive effect but also what it will be doing um is it will make it so that there's a ton of sell orders available right for all sorts of consumption goods which means and stuff like paper which means that we don't have to deviate very much from what we want to focus on um uh in terms of our construction queue and instead we can stay focused and go for specialization this will allow us to harvest bigger economies of scale bonuses um from having you know buildings built up to multiple levels and so this will help us they will be able to eat also more of our output because the market is larger they will be able to eat our output um and then this sort of stuff they have to more demand than we could possibly create for wood let's say uh if we just built a ton of wood we wouldn't have enough demand for it the austrians provide a bunch of demand which allows us to go further specialization and so this is going to be important also being friends with austria and russia is going to be important because they will be very valuable allies if they declare war or if they join with us against the ottoman empire because it seems to be the case that in patch 1.2 the ai is much more willing to contribute troops uh if they are already adjacent and these are the two great powers that are adjacent to kebab uh to a lesser extent egypt can also be helpful but they don't like us very much right now okay so that's kind of all of the considerations now we talked about wanting to specialize in in terms of uh industry so we're going to talk about our authority uh how we are going to be spending our authority we talked about wanting to specialize specifically in resources and so what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to put a decree for encourage the resource industries here we are going to be focused on wood first and then iron um this decree will be very val very valuable early on um as the resource industries are extremely good early but then they fall off and then this 
this decree will get not as good as a manufacturing degree, which we will put in Attica. This way, hopefully, if we have an auto queue building something, it will build the manufacturing here and leave our... Uh, what is it? Our infrastructure available here in Peloponnese uh, for mines and such because we want to be going logging camps into iron mines here. And this will be our general strategy as far as, you know, what we need to put in immediately on the authority. Uh, we will also be bolstering an interest group if we come into government and we go to marginalized. We will be bolstering the industrialists because we want them to come up above 5% clout and even further we want to get them to 20% clout. The reason being is they have a particularly good bonus that's strong in the early game which is extra investment pool contribution efficiency for capitalists. Remember, we're trying to move everything onto capitalists because this contribution efficiency is going to give us a lot of money for construction. Construction you can think of as being your GDP growth rate, so it's extremely important. They cannot provide this bonus until they're at 5% clout. We're going to do some stuff to make them happy, so we will be getting this bonus once they get to 5% clout. And once they get to 20% clout, the, uh, it will be doubled, so this is why we are paying for this in terms of our authority. With our remaining authority, we're going to want to put in consumption taxes and we are going to put it mainly on sin taxes and luxury goods. That way we're not taxing the lower rung pops as much. We will do the authority trick here, um, which is to bring this up to get the 10% authority and then bring it back down and we will be running an authority deficit. It gives us opposition gr interest group approval malice, but it's not particularly large because it's based on percentage authority and it's a very small percent relative to your starting authority because starting authority is generally pretty huge on countries. So that's that handled. Now let's talk about our construction queue a little bit. Uh, for our construction queue, remember what we are focused on is trying to get as much of our stuff capitalist owned as possible. And so what we will be doing is we're first going to build a construction center because we can afford one. And then we are going to build building logging camps in Peloponnese. Recall that these are going to have 20% throughput bonus from encouraged resource industry here. We're also going to put it on auto expand. And these are going to be on sawmills. It's important to note that they're sawmills because they are going to be capitalist owned. Capitalists contribute four times as much as their dividends rate to the investment pool. And so we're going to have them on capitalist owned. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any supply or sell orders of tools in the market. We will eventually want tools in the market, but what we're going to do first to try and resolve this is we're going to come into trade routes. Our people don't need any of this furniture. They need the tools. Uh, and we are going to import the tools from Austria because we don't want Austria to lose their protective thing. Uh, we can join their market or we can become a protectorate as long as they have protective. And so we will be trying to do what we need to do first before we move into their market. But as far as construction goes, we have these three first. And then we will want to build one tooling uh, workshop here. And then we will probably be coming back and doing more logging camps and iron mines. Now, let's talk about technology. So very, very early on, uh, we want to, because we are going to be getting a market liberal landowner, we will want to switch from our trade policy onto free trade. This way, once we're inside the Austrians market, we can export iron as we need to, and also because we're focusing on iron, and also import inputs uh, as we need to, and so free trade will be useful, uh, but you notice the landowners hate it. Once we get a market lab liberal landowner, they'll love it, and so... In order to be able to swap, you need the stock exchange technology. We have a bunch of tier 1 techs unresearched. What we will be doing is we will be researching stock exchange because all of these can be selected uh, to natural spread to us. Um, cotton gin is the only one that can natural spread to us. So even though stock exchange might not necessarily be the priority, this will natural spread to us anyways, so we'll go cotton gin and lay. If we find that stock exchange is natural spreading to us after we unpause, we will instead go cotton gin and lathe because this is more important. Early on, we talked about what we're focused on. We're focused on the mines. And so we will be wanting to just go to atmospheric engine pump as quickly as possible. And then likely after this, we will be going mechanical tools, railways, because we don't have that much infrastructure, or water tube boiler, because again, we're going to be focused on the mines in Peloponnese. And so this is going to be our strategy as far as technology goes. Um, kind of later on, we will want colonization. We might want to go egalitarianism. We have a lot of level one tech to get through before we can do that, though. And so it might be more kind of good for us to go, you know, water to boiler, mechanized workshops, and these sorts of things first. But we'll make that sort of decision. That's just how we're thinking about technology. 
Now, for our expansion plan, we are going to be going for Montenegro first, and we will just be conquer-stating them. If we were already de decaying some infamy, we'd go for the Dominion, but we're just going to go for the conquer-state, the quick and breezy. And then, I think we are about ready to unpause. Uh, let's spend our diplomacy really quick. We, of course, want to improve relationship with Daddy, our future Daddy, and Russia. And then also Egypt will be a nice one as well. We will also look to keep relations good with Great Britain and France because we don't like fingers in our pie. And that about has everything all set up. Now, for our expansion plan, uh, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be going Montenegro into Brunei, into Bahrain, and the reason we're doing these is so we will have natural interests in both the Middle East and in Indonesia so we can expand there while we will put our single interest we can declare here in Sengal. The reason we want it in Sengal... Oop, I forgot we gotta do this. We have to put prioritize export in order to provoke the corn laws. Just real quick, see that there? Okay, back to explaining. We will want an interest in Sengal because we are hopefully going to be able to colonize in to Eastern Mali, uh, colonize in through Suzu and then conquer Fudajalan, Cartega, Sagogu, and then Eastern Mali in order to build the very, very strong Mosque of Jine, which the AI never builds, but it's there, I swear. We will, of course, land here in Montenegro and it's free real estate, my friends. And so this will be the plan uh, for our expansion uh, early on. Kind of later, we will probably want to go Zulu into Transvaal. But I think after these three wars, we will be looking to try and maybe get something done against the Kebab. Um, we get a naval invasion. We get on top of them. And we see that we have some stuff going on in the auto queue now, which is fine for us. We get a grain of power. Now, most of these events, let's talk about the grain laws, corn laws. We needed to put on prioritize export in order to provoke them. Now we're prioritizing it. So the landowners, uh, we will get a bunch of negative events, but there's one event that's going to be particularly good that is going to give us a market liberal landowner. Now, currently our landowner, if I recall correctly, is a moderate, which means he doesn't support anything. You know, theocrat supports all this like theocratic stuff. And here we see we get the industrialists. They're now up here. So we're getting increased production tech cost this is why we bolster them at the start also they did benefit a lot from us switching on to the chop chops on everything or the sawmill chop chops we get an enforcement on them so we're going to take a pause we're going to say yeah to the monument and we are going to we don't need to put in we're going to put it on vineyards because we don't want to forget we're just going to briefly check all this stuff i think we're on fishing trawlers at the start and we will want to come onto wrought iron tools very quickly um, when we, it becomes available but for now we are going to be wanting to do again join his market uh, in just a moment but we will be declaring on brunei now which is why we declared our interest at the very start here we will be going just to annex them so we will take do Conquer State. We're actually going to take a quick save here because great powers love to put, stick their finger in your pie. But I think we'll be fine here. They seem to particularly like it when you have unrecognized powers as subjects. We don't have any unrecognized powers as subjects. We're not subjugating Brunei. We're just conquering Brunei. And we're going to go Conquer State North Bonu. And now that we have this in, we can actually just move our interests. And so we can click here and move it over here. Now, why Brunei specifically? Brunei is going to give us access to several things uh, that are particularly good. First of all, more iron mines, big yes, but also these gold fields, which are going to allow us to construct a lot more. And third, it's also going to give us land access to Great Xing's market because Lanfang is a member, member of their market. And so this is why going for Brunei very early is so good. Um, there's also, you know, there's more gold in Sintang. There's oil in Kutai. It's a nice place to have an interest. All the wars are really easy. You can land them very easily notice all of our wars we have to be we only have these 10 troops and these five landers and so they have to be very easy but these are easy high profitable wars and here we have the modern conservative now this is what i was talking about with the corn laws the modern conservative event pops and we'll come over here and we'll take a look he's a moderate now when we click a new leader for our age he will now be a market liberal, which means he supports all of this laissez-faire, child labor, free trade, serfdom abolished type of stuff, which normally the landowners oppose. Uh, the ideology of the individual will override the ideology of the interest group, and so now they just straight up support that stuff, which is, by the way, why we are researching stock exchange first 
and not researching something else, uh, you know, why we are not prioritizing the production tech, which is better. We are going this so that hopefully we can pass this before our market liberal landowner dies, because he's going to die eventually. Um, if you have stock exchange nat spreading to us, which we have academia nat spreading to us, you would not go stock exchange first, you would just let it spread. Let the man spread. All right, we are continuing on. We will be uh, doing this over here, and we will be passing a law. Now, I think that interventionalism or laissez-faire is maybe not strong when we have this little construction, and so we're not gonna pass it quite yet, but we're gonna take a look. I don't think we can pass, nope, we can't pass this. Uh, I think we're, so we could go landed voting. I don't think we're quite feeling it at this moment. We actually have decent laws here at the start. Uh, we would want to move on to less religious schools and also, you know, move on to off of state religion. So maybe we could do that. Let's reform the government, put this boyo in and see what things look like. And we will just try and get on to freedom of conscience, uh, we will, which will not make anyone too bad, but will hopefully make the intelligentsia a little happy, which will give us faster society tech, which is quite nice. And then we'll be coming here in Brunei. A man in demand? A demand in a man? Uh, we're not going to owe an obligation. Ooh, bleh. We don't want the negative relations, but we don't want the, to owe them an obligation. We don't want to be in their market. So this is unfortunate. We will be trying to do that. Uh, we will be doing a little bit of a landing here, though. There was something I feel like I'm forgetting. Which is always unfortunate when you feel like you're forgetting something. Ah, yes. We, of course, don't want to be exporting this. We want to end the corn laws now that we've got our man. We have a little bit of a problem with supplying our tools, uh, but we have our market liberal guy. So now that we have our market liberal guy, we're ending the landowners and we're going to join daddy's market. Daddy, are you still protective? Uh, we can't protect it, become the protectorate while we're at war. This seems fair enough. That is the reason you're saying no, yes? Yeah, we have to be at peace. So once we get at peace, we will be joining them. We should have a nice little easy beasy landing, and then we'll be going after Bahrain next. Now, it's important to emphasize, I think that it's better to just join their market, but it's going to be difficult to get their customs union. It's going to take a little while. We actually have pretty low standard of living, so this will be a little bit of a struggle. I think we can afford more construction, though, and by I think we can afford it, we definitely can afford it. We just need to do, you know, some of this. Uh, the name of the game is really trying to increase construction as much as possible. This will lower our SOL, but long term we'll be fine. And anti-clericalism seems necessary. And we are going to enforce on Brunei in just a second here. And we have... Uh, unfortunately, we lost the industrialist bonus, but this is going to be fine in the long term. Once we get this tech, we're going to make them big happy. We have a revolution brewing. I don't think it can get up to 50%. Uh, but we will ask to become a protectorate. Of course, they will say yes. Hello, daddy. Won't you adopt us, please? And they accept. And so now we have our consumer goods. Our SOL should come up because our consumer goods are going to get cheaper. Uh, now that we are in Austria's market, you see it's starting to tick up. We will also lose pops to migration in the short term. But in the long term, we should net have more positive uh, kind of on that front. Uh, after we research the tech, we will be swapping over uh, to a different thing. But we have now finished here our chop chops which will be very, very profitable. Wood is expensive in the market right now, which is great for us. And so these will be contributing a lot to the investment pool. If we take a look here, we are getting quite a bit of investment pool transfer. If we hover over and we take a look at what's transferring so much, I have a sneaking suspicion the logging camps are number one and they are owned by notably capitalists, which are gonna be the ones who contribute big. Uh, we have freedom of conscience now. And so we are gonna come over here and we are going to go into the buildings tab and we will be swapping over the PMs to secular, which will help to empower the intelligentsia, kneecap the, these guys, and so on and so forth. Now, since we are in Austria's market, we can just switch to wrought iron tools immediately. Even though we don't have any iron available, we'll swap all these to fishing trawlers because we did pick up some territory. We'll double check here. Do you have a port? You have a port in the queue. This is fine. We might delete the barracks on these guys. And then we'll come over here and we'll take a look at the PMs. We have this on steam trawlers. We do have the port. We would want to delete the barracks. We can't delete the barracks currently because we have a revolution brewing. But now it's time to get started on our next war. And so we are going to conquer state Bahrain. We, of course, will take a quick save because diplomatic plays are a... Uh, 
very unfun mechanic at this current juncture in patch 1.2.7. Uh, great fingers love to stick their finger in your pie, and we're just going to conquer state Bahrain now. Bahrain is the reason we're going for Bahrain is because eventually they will have a ton of oil. It'll give us an interest here. Nejd and Jabal Shamar are decent, you know, fights that we can pick, and we notably want to get these set in place for when we eventually get colonization. Um, that way we can keep our colonization interested here in uh, Somali. Or not Somali. Uh, Sengal. One moment. Alright. We are five. So, we have this pop off. So, let's do our landing now. Naval invasion here. Oop. And we are off on our way. Notably, SOL, climbing back up as we get access to cheap consumer goods. We see we're running a pretty big authority deficit. We'll get rid of this, and so we should be a pretty break-even. We can deficit spend a little bit, and so I think we're going to add even more construction in. And we really want to get to the point where we have, you know, maybe 20 to 40 construction before we go laissez-faire. And so this is kind of going to be our strategy after we get stock exchanged. Now notice cotton gin has been not spreading to us this entire time. We will be getting it very very quickly and be moving into atmospheric engine slash railroads these sorts of things very, very quickly here. Now we have this law that we can now pass so we'll come in here we will go for free trade which will make this attempted swap will make people happy we will also do this because this is much more legitimate and legitimacy is good and now the industrialists are happy which is going to give us 20 percent capitalist contributions pool efficiency or contribution efficiency notably this creates money out of nothing so this number is just gets to be 10 percent bigger for free um, we also are getting a similar effect on the aristocrats investment pool contribution efficiency because this guy is happy because he's a market liberal big nice big happy orthodox church isn't very happy but you know it is what it is now we could also use authority to uh do road maintenance to allow us to build faster here but i don't think this is quite necessary we're going to put in an iron mine we're going to put it on auto expand now it's important to note iron mines right now picks and shovels not capitalist owned so we actually let's actually not build this iron mine just yet but instead just add more logging camps these are very profitable um wood is a little bit expensive but it's not too expensive yet and we are getting a lot of contribution to the investment pool from these guys notably there's a 20 percent throughput bonus from encouraging the resource industries which we talked about earlier we are going free trade and now we can kind of declare wars at our leisure a little bit we can declare another interest in an area if we like now we could maybe go for something over here and in order to just kind of continue our strategy of getting an interest in an area why don't we do that because we're not particularly close to colonization at this point and maybe we can go for costa rica here we'll see maybe there's too much fingers and too many pies this sort of thing but we our third construction center is coming off and what we will want to do now i believe is we're going to want to start swapping over um to iron frame buildings in the near-ish future especially if our investment pool is growing because what this does is it increases the amount of construction goods that get used and this is what we're being throttled by right now um we also notably ooh, free trade big quick uh we will come in here and now we will switch over to laissez-faire. Once we get laissez-faire, um, what we will be doing is we'll be switching to iron frame buildings. Uh, right now, we I don't think we can quite afford it, but we will be able to afford it. Uh, notably, we are now growing the investment pool by a ton. And so this number plus this number is the real amount of money you're making. Once we get on laissez-faire, we will get increased contribution to the uh, investment pool, much as the same as the industrialist bonus. And so this will be good. We're going to take a save, but we're going to... Actually, do we have an interest here yet? I think we declared it a little bit late. We do. So we're going to take a save. Now, because these guys are recognized powers, it seems to be the case that, man oh man, do people like sticking their finger in your pie if the... If you have subjects that are unrecognized powers, we're going to take a look here. We have zero infamy, so we're actually just going to go for the conquest. But we could pump at these guys, maybe. And then we will take a look at some trade routes. Now, we keeping in mind, let's just take a quick look at our industry. We want our industries to be really profitable. And so we see that we don't have a lot of this. We don't, don't have too much of this, but we have a ton of chop chops. It is actually reasonable for us to export some of this wood. Um... But it is also our primary construction cost, and so we don't need to export it, absolutely. But something we don't want is 
fabric being built uh, in our place. So we will actually import it to the market if we can do in a productive way from someone. Nah, this isn't quite what we're looking for. Uh, let's see if we can maybe do this with uh, grain. This is a little bit more on board. Now notice we can get to a level two route with Grace Shing and it's taking us zero convoys. This convoys thing is because we're adjacent to the market here in Lanfang. Um, as a result of Brunei, Brunei is a very strong state because of this. And so we're just gonna import grain from Brunei, which will discourage our auto queue from building it. And this will, route will also kind of, you know, push the equilibrium price of grain down and this sort of thing, which is why it's uh, discouraging it from building it. All right. Now, we don't have a revolution brewing, so we're going to come over here and we are going to get rid of uh, our Montenegrin. Because I don't think... Let's actually check if this is the same strategic region. I think it is a different strategic region uh, than the rest of Greece. Oh, no, it's in the Balkans. Okay, so we're going to delete uh, not Montenegro, but the North Borneo. Uh, HQ and we're gonna come in here for cannon artillery. We're still on irregulars, not too good, but other than that, big nice. So New Granada sides with Costa Rica, so we will not be doing this anymore. We will instead take a quick load and be back on our way with a different war. Now, if New Granada was not adjacent to Costa Rica, we would probably just take it anyways, because I don't think New Granada is ever landing us. Um, I suppose we could have taken a closer look at what they wanted and how much how powerful they are. They're, we're almost as powerful as them. But we can instead go after Nicaragua, Nicaragua, which they will not be land adjacent to, so they will have a much harder time helping out. And so we're going to go for Conquer State Nicaragua here. And hopefully we don't get a finger in our pie. Let's take a look at our diplomacy, because we are floating a bunch of extra diplomacy. We will look to improve relations. We're going to look to improve them with Great Britain so that our pie doesn't get fingered. Now, Austria is really happy with us. We are their subject. Uh, we will get positive relations ticking because of our subjecthood. Uh, if you take a look here, uh, you'll see that you were getting it because of the protectorate. And so this will be nice. And uh, we'll keep them nice and happy so that hopefully, and we do get the war here. So that hopefully they will help us out when we go for our first kebab war. Um, so we get popular playwright endorses reform. Notably, when you don't have a lot of uh, prestige, this event is generally pretty good because it just gives you free prestige. We will take the prestige and continue on. Let's take a look at our queue. Uh, and we are going to take this out. This was from Montenegro. We're going to kick this to the bottom. We're going to cancel this. And we're going to let the port finish because it's currently not connected Um well, it's directly connected to Austria, which is nice. We see that our overlord, Daddy's having a little bit of tussle with Mommy. Uh, our naval invasion is successful. Big nice. We're going to get a push here. We can also notably now declare an interest. And we're going to take this one away. We don't need it to enforce the war. And we're going to put it in Senegal. And so now we have a bunch of areas with the declared interest. Um, and we can expand there at our leisure and also colonize here as soon as it's available. Did we... What did we match, Fred? Academia, which is good. We are now natural spreading colonization, which is going to be nice. We're going to want to put it in relatively early. I think we're going to want to rush water tube boiler. I have to take a look at the infrastructure we have available in Peloponnese. It's really just kind of a game of, are we going to get the infrastructure cap? Yeah, we're going to get to the infrastructure cap pretty quick here. And so we're going to go mechanical tools, railways, and then water tube boiler. We conquer Nicaragua. Big nice. So we're going to take a look, and we're going to switch over any PMs we need to, uh, like this. We're actually going to use our handy-dandy smacky-wacky button and go state actions, reset PMs, and take a look, and then we'll be in here. We have a bunch of uh, other now arable resources, and this port will employ up quite nice. Um, we can take a save and we can keep pushing in here, or we can come over and go for a Kutai I like. Uh, I think we're gonna go for Sintang though. We have a land adjacency to Sintang here, so we're gonna take a save and we're gonna go for Sintang. The reason we're going for Sintang is because they have gold there. Gold is going to contribute a lot of money to us. If we take a look and we look at minting, we're getting 4K from minting, Close to half of that is from our gold fields in North Borneo, of which we only have three. So if we can pick up more gold fields, this is big nice. Let's take a look, and let's go for the Conquer State on Sinteng. Notably, we can also just kick this guy over here, and we don't have to worry too much. We, of course, will load if Great Power sticks their finger in our pie, and we'll get laissez-faire too at, while we're at it. Now, if we take a look here, 
Our investment pool is huge. And now it will be slowly draining because three quarters of our, uh, our construction queue is going to be owned by the auto queue. And so the auto queue can drain uh, more in terms of the investment pool transfer. And so now that the investment pool transfer has shot up, now three fourths of our construction goods are gonna be paid by the investment pool. Now, we also are gonna lose control of a lot of our queue, but this is okay. This is the price of progress. We're gonna kick this construction center up to iron frame buildings. And this will just dramatically increase the construction good cost, which will cause this investment pool to drain pretty quick, but it's already pretty big. And this will basically double our construction here. And then we will want to get out from under this by building iron mines. Now the iron mines are gonna take a little bit to finish. We're gonna kick this government administration to the bottom here, in North Borneo. Actually, we might just cancel it. Let's just cancel it. And let's also come in, we'll actually come in here and we will incorporate, and we will also incorporate North Borneo. The pops are here are pretty small at the start. And we will come into the market tab and we will see if we can export this. I don't think we will be able to, at least not profitably. So let's just come off of it. Two arms, we get a little bit of a fight with Simpeng, which of course we will win. Now we will be wanting, we see that Ottomans are fighting Egypt, so we're going to see if we can get a fight, and hopefully this Austria war ends as well. Austria will not be joining on our side uh, to help against uh, the Ottomans while they are involved in their own war with Prussia, but they might join after, so this is kind of what we're going to do. We're actually also going to swap over to this stuff. Since we are inside the uh, market, Austria provides these resources. Daddy will provide, as it were. We don't mind that being less profitable because we'd actually prefer it not to get built, uh, although it is contributing to the investment pool a little bit, not a lot of it. And so we're settling into our doubled construction. This will slowly drain the investment pool, uh, but we can, I think we can build into this just fine um, and afford all this. These are notably very profitable, but now you are seeing we are having a problem in terms of hiring. Um, as demand for labor goes up, the SOL will go up and we will be more dependent on migration. We're going to take a quick look because we might be starting to get close to that already. We have some unemployed, we still have some peasants, so we can still wait around, but we are going to need to get on migration kind of relatively quick. And so we're going to take a look at our laws and we're going to look at, we kind of want to get onto cultural exclusion or racial segregation because this will allow us to get migration from Austria. And so we're going to come in here. I believe racial segregation will allow it. And we're going to see what we can do with getting the intelligentsia in government. Can we put that? It's a little better. Nope, not with armed forces. Okay, fair enough. And we got the pacifist intelligentsia. And we will be trying to get cultural exclusion, um, which is going to allow us to get uh, migration from Austria. Now, we don't have a higher SOL than them in general, but we might have a higher in some areas. Cross-border investments. Please, oh please, yes. Let's go, daddy. You get that. You get that bread. Now, uh, we are kind of just in a waiting spot. We don't want to declare war because we want to wait. Uh, we actually want to decay our infamy a little bit anyways. Um, not a lot of it. But we are waiting to see if Austria gets an enforcement here. Let's also, you know, use our handy smacky wacky button. And reset the PMs over here. And delete this barracks because we will not be using it notably these guys sawmills contribution investment pool big nice but now our investment pool is a little bit drained and so we're starting to have a little bit of uh, trouble in paradise here uh, we are roughly speaking losing around 3k i'm not sure this is sustainable so we will probably because you have to do this number plus this number we will probably have to delete one construction center but we will Eh, this is not almost built. We will delete the construction center now. This is fine. And then we will kind of be accumulating money. We're just at the cusp where we would want to put one in. So maybe we put one in here and keep it on wood frame building. Or actually, by the time this finishes, we'll be fine to have another one. So King intervenes. Hell yeah, brother. His will will be done. Now we are setting it up so that we can get more migration. And we see that Austria now has finished their war. So we're going to take a save here and we're going to go after the kebab. We, of course, want them to return the dirt that they took from us. Return Thessaly. 
and Austria might side with this. This is because they are our daddy. And so this is a big reason why we wanted to get in their market, get them friendly, get them protective, um, this sort of stuff. We don't really, there's not much of a, a malice for being a protectorate, and we believe that he just raw dog sides with us, doesn't even need to be swayed. And so this will be really nice. Um, we will see what we can do here. Uh, we can get him here at the start. So if we get him at the start, which we use what you do in their protectorate, um, you, they will get in control of the war and we won't be able to get war reps from them. And so this is one thing we could do. But if we really want to release Albania as well. So we'll see if we can get France in uh, for something useful. And then if we can't, we'll reload and we'll try it again with Austria. Um, and we'll just take just the Thessaly as it were. But this will be fine. Ottomans declare a rivalry, of course. Um, now we're making a ton of money, so I'm thinking we actually didn't need to delete that construction center. Let's delete this one. We, we got a little spooked. We should have just finished the construction center. Let's see if we can sway them. Offer take treaty port. Libya, I think, is going to be the one... Yeah, let's offer a Libya treaty port. France. And let's slow down a little here. Now, because they are, they are Overlord, we can only convince them at the start of the play and not later on in the play. And then um, this is a little bit unfortunate and would be one reason why, you know, customs unioning would be better. And hopefully they actually contribute some stuff. We're going to go for war reparations on the Ottomans as well, which is going to be good. And we are going to see what else we can take. Um, we are going to add this to primary probably, but we'll see if we can conquer state in Albania. This is going to be too much infamy, I think. I think we just try and liberate, but I don't think we have enough, uh, unfortunately. So what we will do is we will make the war reps uh, primary, and we will also put something like ban slavery or revoke claim uh, in order to give them a reason to back down. We'll just ban slavery in the Ottoman Empire. And we will mobilize here, and we will put in on this front. We will just give that up. Not a big deal. Now they are worried, so if they back down, this is big fine with us. And they are fairly likely to back down because they don't like any of this. We of course can't sway Austria, as for reasons discussed. But let's see how much France is willing to really... Um... So one of the problems with getting someone to join on your side is that they will often not be contributing very many troops unless they have a land border. So this is one reason why, you know, there can be problems. They're terrified, though. Please back down. And you see, France hasn't contributed anything here. So we might just be asking Daddy for help instead. Yeah, let's ask Daddy. So, I wish, uh, you know, be a little bit more... <laughs> the great powers contributing, like, nothing uh, to fights is, like, very annoying. Uh, unless they're fighting against you, then they contribute the whole bag. But we'll instead just go for, hey daddy, you know, we want this war, won't you please help us out? And we will just get Thessaly only. Um, it's a little bit unfortunate, but maybe we go for something else if we're going to do this. Um, like Macedonia. Let's take a quick look at all of these. Uh, because if we could only declare one war goal, which is what is the case um, when you uh, ask daddy to help out. Um, at least it is last I checked. Um, so we're going to come in, we're going to look. I think we just want to actually go after Albania then. Um, because the iron mines it's going to give us is going to be quite nice. Um, and it's also going to have a bunch of arable land. So we could put our capital here. Now I don't think Albania is needed, if I'm not mistaken, for forming. Oh, it's needed for forming Byzantium. So we'll just go for Albania then. Uh, which will be a nice little war goal. So, we're going to conquer state Albania, and then we're going to ask Daddy to help. Daddy. We have to offer him an obligation. This is unfortunate. This is not the most ideal, because I think he can ask us to puppet, but we can always say no, but then Daddy will be mad at us. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we cannot put in war reps. Otherwise, if we put in war reps, we can't ask Daddy. Oh, I guess we can. Alright, let's ask Daddy. Hmm. Let's double check why that is that this is happening. Okay. 
So maybe we just are a little bit too slow because we're on speed five. We're gonna conquer state Albania. We're going to ask daddy to join. And then I think he gains control of the play. So I think we can't put in war reps. We'll see what we can do. Yep, so now he is the war leader. He is the war leader. But now, since it's his war, he's really gonna mobilize everything. And so, Austria sides with Austria. You love to see it. Daddy coming in. And this is notably big part of why we're doing this in our particular way. We are making a ton of money. Now, the investment pool is even growing. Big happy, big nice. Uh, we are gonna add to this. And we are focusing more here uh, because we are have the resource extraction edict, um, which is why we're doing this. And we will very soon have atmospheric engine, which will allow those buildings to be um, capitalist owned, which is what's really important. And since daddy is next to the Ottoman Empire, unlike France, they're going to, you know, full send into the Ottomans here, who are also busy fighting Egypt. Uh, not anymore. They gave up with that one. And we are just going to, you know, very quickly get this. The North Bornean Cyclone, who cares? Oh, it's only 400. That's fine. We'll pay it. And we're starting to come up on here quite a bit in terms of SOL. Uh, because we are going to actually start caring about migration relatively early, we might actually even want to start lowering taxes here um, to raise SOL, which will increase our ability to siphon off pops from Austria. And we're just going to look to slowly raise SOL here. And this throughput is extremely nice because it's making it so we increase the amount of tools by 23%, but also the amount of outgoing wood is increased by 23%. We're gonna see if we can maybe export wood. We can to the British market. I think I like this. Now this is going to make our chop chops more profitable and our chop chops are what we have. And these have really nice rate of return in terms of the amount of time it takes to build them to the export rate. Um, we hate the splitters. Five, 400 government expenses isn't too bad. And, but we are going to get minus 10% enactment chance. I'm not sure if this is kind of worth or not. Hmm. I think we could just do this and stay on it then. And we get here our nice little Albania, which we will come in and we will incorporate. Let's not incorporate it just yet. Let's actually, let's have a think. Let's think rationally. I do believe we have enough um, of these that we can switch to filing cabinets. Not quite, so we are gonna to need to build another government administration. We are gonna see if we have insufficient tax capacity anywhere. We do not. Um, I think we're gonna be moving the capital to Peloponnese. So we're gonna build a government administration here and we're gonna kick it up close to the top. We're gonna to click it up. Oop, I guess we don't need that construction center now. We're going to kick it up kind of here, and we will actually switch from encouraging manufacturing, I think, here to over here in Peloponnese. Well, we will switch in a little bit. We will also come in and update some of the PMs. We'll first do our smacky wacky button. State actions, reset production methods. We're going to reset over there. And then we're going to come in and by hand switch over this. Now, if you take a look here, very important, merchant guild owned, shopkeepers, 5% contribu uh, contribution to the investment pool, dye workshops, pub privately traded, capitalists, 20% contribution. So this is why we're doing this. We'll also do craftsman sewing. I think daddy will be able to sort that out in terms of the market. Yeah, we will want Albania here. Albania is big nice. And then we can return state Thessaly later. Um, also, well, one nice thing that would have been nice about Thessaly uh, is I believe they have a really large barracks there. And so this kind of would have been nice. Uh, we don't have any more troops from Albania specifically. But this is okay. We maybe don't actually even want that many troops right now. And so let's take a look. We have a lot of infamy, if I'm not mistaken. But we can maybe do some small ball expansion. Let's take a look at maybe going after Bulligan here. So let's take a save. Or let's maybe it's Kutai is probably a bit better. Uh, maybe over here, actually. No, Kutai has oil. They're probably a better shout. And also, no one's going to join uh, that's going to be... They, we can also build... Uh, what is it? Dies here. So we're going to go for Conquer State Kutai, which is going to bring us almost to max infamy. 
we'll see if we can rival these guys because we're going to be fighting them anyways and then we're going to also come in and go diplomatic actions and try and improve relations with everyone because some people don't like what we just did you know in regards to down there we'll also improve with new granada for now um because we don't want them fingering our pie later when we maybe want to expand down there unfortunately we haven't gotten on colonization yet I do think we're about to unlock the tech or we're getting close. Um, and so we can probably, it looks like we're good on the front that no one's gone into Suzu. We're getting a decent amount of incorporated pop. We still have to incorporate a little bit more. We have one mil, so we won't even colonize that fast anyways. But we get atmospheric engine pump, fantastic. So what this does is if we come over here, we've been emphasizing we really don't want to be on shopkeeper owned. We want to be on capitalist owned. And now we can swap over basically just in time for this transition to iron mine more than the wood we're going to be running out of places we can build chop chops but we are still encouraging the resource industry here and we will now be building mines here and they're going to be capitalist owned so they're going to be contributing a lot to the investment pool and so we're going to be focusing on iron now um, notably we don't have any iron mines that can build up to level 51 so we can never get max throughput and so this strategy will fall off but for now it seems fine we of course will be landing kutai i think in the medium-ish term we will want to maybe try and um, get some more ships, but uh, I don't think that's quite yet. We will probably just take the enactment chance, and this will be unfortunate, but we can just get rid of a consumption tax. We're going to get rid of liquor, um, which will help the lower rung pops more, and we are now noticing the SOL is climbing up. We do have a bit of an excess, especially because we've decreased the tax rate on them by removing the liquor and this sort of thing. We will also see about importing uh, more grain if we can. So let's come into the market. Let's import it from Xing. I thought we were importing from Xing. Okay. This, of course, uses a little bit of bureaucracy, um, which is kind of something we uh, want uh, to get up a little bit, as we see here. Uh, but this will be fine. We're losing a little bit of money whenever you're valuing a money, though. You have to do this number plus this number, so we're actually getting money. Um, it will just, eventually, the, the auto queue will be picking up more stuff, and so then we will get refunded the money effectively. Ah, our landing didn't quite work, did it? That's unfortunate. We might have to recruit another general so it splits, and so we get less of a landing malice from having more uh, guys than we have ships. We get cultural exclusion. Big nice. And I think that the next law we're going to want to pass is some colonial affairs, but we could go on to private schools or something like this. Right now, I think we'll stay on religious schools. We have migration controls. I think we're going to switch to no migration controls. Let's try and pass that now. And we are trying to keep an eye on this war, because it is important. We're working on the government administration now. This is slowly coming on up. Because we are going to need migration. Yeah, unfortunately, you see, we are getting a malice. Uh, well, we should be able to do this. It's just going to take a few tries. We have a lot of infamy anyways, so we don't might be mind being stuck in this war for a while. They have... Uh, the, they have put in like war reps from us so they can never enforce on us unless they take some of our dirt which they're not going to and so we just have time to kind of work this through um, we're just going to take a quick look back here and just looking at the profitability of the iron mines here we unlock colonization we're going to take a tick on no uh, migration controls and then we're going to swap the colonization and I think that we want to do this sooner rather than later, where we're swapping over, where we're encouraging manufacturing. So we'll come over here. We'll get rid of encourage manufacturing there. Unfortunately, it's going to make that stuff less profitable. But we will encourage manufacturing over here instead. And then we will decrease this back down. And you notice we're probably... No, we're okay on the investment pool but we do have decreased profitability in these areas too. Did that cause a tax problem? No. Let's cancel that trade route as well. It's no longer profitable. We will acquiesce to their demands. Wondering why this increased so suddenly. Well, I mean, it really did make a big difference that we were stopped encouraging manufacturing there, huh? We could remove this and put in the the encourage manufacturing back so why don't we try that hmm 
could increase taxes. But this will hurt our ability to get migration. Let's come in and try and land again. Could also just be people dying and labor becoming more expensive from these failed landings. I think we're fine, though. You can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs. We could notably could have gone for Booligan first, which we would have had an adjacency towards. Looks like we're finally going to get our landing off here, though, and we will get in on them. Foreign Fates. We will take the extra migration. We also might have pissed off a group. Is that maybe what happened? No, these are all happy with us. Notably... Oop, no, just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, notably, the migration one is particularly good for us at this point. We're going to force on Kutai here. We'll do our handy-dandy smacky-wacky button. And then we'll see about maybe trying to... Do we need to delete any of these? We need to delete Borneo, East Borneo. This will help save us a little bit of money. We're going to switch Greek Montenegro to cannons. Uh, we're going to switch these to fig orchards and harvesting tools. Overall, relatively simple economy we got going. Not a lot of different things going on. We're losing some money, but this will be fine for now. We're just not going to expand construction yet. Uh, I think we're going to start incorporating here, even though this will cause a tax malice. Because we're going to be finished on this soon. We are going to cause a rev. No, we're not. Okay. And then let's see if we can just cancel a trade route. It's not even profitable right now. Let's go. So we're going to have a slight malice to uh, tax waste. But once this gets finished, this will get resolved, and we will incorporate this really quick anyways, because it is accepted territory. And we get no migration controls, which is going to help us to pull siphon off pops from uh, our friend in Austria. I mean, daddy. So now we want to go for the colonization. So we're going to go exploitation. Which, of course, is going to cost more bureaucracy. So I'm happy we are working on that right now. I think we're going to expand another one of these here. The hard times, you're telling me. We can't afford that, whatever it is. Freedom to starve, that's what you have. I think we will... St I think the encouraged manufacturing is not going to cut it here long term. So we're going to... Ooh, this is why. We forgot to bring this back down. That explains everything. Okay. So now we're in okay shape and we can keep building like this. All right. Just wanted to make sure. We see no one's in Suzu yet, which is fantastic. Ooh, New Granada's having some trouble. That's a little bit interesting. Let's take a look at our legitimacy and see if we can maybe spice things up a little bit. I suppose we don't need the intelligentsia in here anymore, so we could do this, which is going to help with the loyalists and the radicals, or the relative balance between the two. Good connections. Can we... I think the industrialists... Oh, they're not even that happy with us. So we're going to just take the minus chance. The reason they're not happy with us, I believe, is because, yeah, pacifist. Unfortunate. We'll try and pass other stuff that they like. Uh, we will accept from France, I think. Generous donations from them. And this is almost done, so this should recover a bit once we get better tax rates in. Let's take a look into our uh, resource industries. Now, I think that we do not necessarily need to actually go railways first. I think we can do this... Do want to expand construction though. Government wages are a bit expensive. I think what we're going to do here is actually, we're going to honor these ports. We're going to swap them all to anchorages here, which will save us quite a lot of money. And then we're going to add some construction in capital here, or the future capital. We're going to build this first. Ah, uh, I forgot state- we had a lot of turmoil here to start. We're gonna finish this government administration, but we're gonna cancel the other one. 
because it was freshly conquered. Of course it's morally correct to exploit. So we're going to come in. We're going to build the construction center in Albania. And then things will be fine. We are making quite a bit of money now that we've turned off. Uh, notably, also, we don't really need to support that many convoys because Daddy is taking care of everything. We're going to take a look at our diplomacy here. And we have a truce. When does it end? In 47. So in a little close to a year. So we will want our infamy to be relatively low at that time. So we're going to check our infamy now. It is really low. So we're going to take a save and we're going to maybe go for um, some territory over here. Or we could go for Bulligan or Belungan. I think we go for Belungan here. They will have oil in the future. This is kind of more important. Or we could go for Sulawesi, which is maybe a little bit easier. And we will just conquer state everything. And then we will just chill until uh, we can fight against the Bob again. And so we will put in all of the war goals, which will make it so they're no longer fearful. This is something to keep in mind. If you're full annexing them, they will stop being fearful once you put everything in them, and the war will go off, and you do not need to make stuff primary. I think this is not operating as intended, but it is what it is. I think we're going to add another construction center here, as head of this iron mine that we can afford. Probably should have turned down the ports earlier. This is a bit unfortunate. I was kind of losing track of how many ports we were collecting, but this was a major expense. Um, government wages are still a major expense, but a lot of it is in the construction centers themselves. The goods for the government building, of course, are getting paid by this huge-ass investment pool, which has been grown because we have a bunch of capitalists and we have laissez-faire. We get mechanical tools, so we can swap over to that probably immediately. Let's see if Daddy has uh, steel in his market. Daddy. So if we swap up, ooh, we do of course have that problem, the infrastructure problem. It rears this ugly head. So we're gonna look to maybe build steel. Wow, uh, we can't really build it anywhere. King's will will be done. I guess we're just gonna, we don't wanna wait on the mechanical tools. Mm. I guess we're gonna put it in and then import steel. Feels bad, man. Gonna import, I guess, from the French. I think this will be fine. And we do have iron problems in the market overall, but this will make our iron mines really, really profitable, which has been the plan this whole time. We unfortunately don't have access to any coal, um, but, uh, okay. And we have gotten most of Belungan, but something to keep in mind, or most of Sulu, is that uh, they have this little island, and this island is their capital, so you can't force on them unless you take it. So we're going to try and land that now. And then we will be mainly chilling. Uh, it's very fortunate that Suzu has not been colonized by other people, and we are getting incorporation in. We get, our incorporated pop is growing up by quite a bit, so hopefully we get the colonization at a kind of a good time. Whoop, more than happy to drum up support for the industrialists. We really want to get them happy. Unfortunately, since they're pacifists, they hate the colonization. Um, there's really not necessarily too many things we can do to make them happy. We're going to run some negative bureaucracy, so we're going to come in here and build a government administration. We're gonna put it behind the iron mine. We want the iron mine to finish first, but then we will uh, swap that over. Um, we don't mind that getting a little bit more radical. And we are enforcing on them now that we've taken their capital, landed their capital here. And now we are just going to chill. We have a decent amount of infamy. It's going to go close to zero. And then we're going to try and do another uh, war on the Ottomans before the end of this episode here. Let's see, migration attraction. We'll just say unfortunate. Do have kind of okay SOL. Do want to, of course, get it up a little bit. Let's take a look how many peasants we have. We still have a decent amount of peasants. Oh, we actually have quite a few peasants. This is fine. Where are these peasants? 
There's a few there. There's a lot there. Yeah, so this is where we're going to want to expand, unfortunately. Well, at least they're migrating out and they're migrating over here, and this is fine. There's quite a lot of turmoil here still. Um, and so we eventually will want to move the capital there, but not yet. Uh, we researched this tech, and now, unfortunately, the auto queue will be more prone to putting Fine Arts Academy in our uh, queue, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. I believe steel is going to be a problem in the longish term. Such is the nature of politics. I believe July was when the Kebab War? Ah, uh, it's just in time for them starting a fight with Egypt. Or Egypt starting a fight with them, so we'll take a quick save. Uh, because, of course, we don't know exactly uh, what we want on them. Well, actually, I'm not sure if that's saved. Let's just save again, just to be double sure, because that was really quick. Normally, normally when we say we take a quick save, we don't mean it. So we can do Return State on Thessaly, and then maybe go for Macedonia as well. Hmm. All right, let's see. So, we might get Austria to support us. Um, we will see what they, of course, want. Uh, it looks like we'll be able to sway the UK, maybe. So, if we put in another... Just trying to take a quick look. Conquer State, and we put in Conquer. Not Ottoman Montenegro, although that would be decent. It would not be terrible, but Macedonia. If we put that in... Can we sway? We can still sway Austria. We can offer them an obligation to join. But I think maybe we want to do it with the UK? Nah, we want to do it with Daddy. So we'll offer him an obligation. Austria sides with Austria. Big nice. Thank you, Daddy. government and men will be nice. Serbia sides with the Ottoman Empire. Now let's see if it nuked... Ah, oh, it kept our Macedonia request. So this is nice. They want to return Albania. I don't think so. I think we will be keeping it, my friend. And by friend, I mean Nemesis. But okay. I think that we want to in the queue, put in some more iron mines. Uh, we're gonna get try and get atmospheric engine pump kind of soon here. We're gonna put this up to the second from the top. Oop. I'm just kidding. We will finish this in Borneo. Finish what we started. We're going to take a look and make sure we're on the latest and greatest. Slaughterhouses, let's go, baby. Sulfite pulping. A furniture manufacturer we got somewhere. I know where we got it, actually. Let's just take a quick look over there. It's in Sulawesi somewhere. Notably, we have a ton of mineable resources, and there are some gold mines. Now, we're not going to build these right now because we have enough turmoil that it's going to be, you know, pretty big construction efficiency malice. But in the near-ish future, we will want to build up those gold mines. We'll take a look over here. Now, all these PMs should be relatively fixed up. We're just going to double check that the rural areas are using... Ah, they're not... We're going to change everything to sawmills and fishing trawlers, because this is the way we... Uh-huh, uh-huh, we like it. Notably, we're going to switch those over to privately owned. Those should have been on privately owned, and we have a huge problem. Where's this coming from? Construction goods? What happened? Wait, why isn't Daddy helping us? Daddy? Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Hmm. Well, Daddy can't help us if he's having a revolt. Um, this is an instance of something not very predictable, but we will uh, take a load <laughs> and not fight the kebab yet. Oh, things were going so well. That's unfortunate. If Daddy's destined to rev, we cannot fight kebab at this point in time with their help, but we might be able to fight them with Great Britain's help. So why don't we take a look at doing that? So we will go in for war reps. We'll be, we will return state on Thessaly. And then we will add Macedonia. And then we will look to sway the UK.
as early as possible so that maybe they contribute something. We'll offer to take a treaty port in Libya. But this might not be enough. And we'll also ask for war reparations and make those primary. Now, why are you confident? Ah, uh, because Great Britain's not going to mobilize anything, are they? We'll see what they mobilize. We'll see what they cook up. We will activate some conscripts here and here. And of course, this is going to happen in Austria. The huge war, the very big no good war. We don't have line infantry currently. I suppose we might as well just swap over now. Um, well, actually, no. Let's not be undisciplined here. Let us maintain our discipline. And the reason we're not swapping over now, because it will make a difference, but... Yep, unfortunately, sorry daddy. That's unfortunate. We apologize. Uh, we do have really expensive construction goods uh, as a result of daddy having some daddy issues. We're, we are having daddy issues of a kind. We will actually delete two of our construction centers. And we'll actually probably just turn off construction because it's so expensive as a result of huge shortages. We'll see if Daddy can fix some of this stuff, but uh, we will be putting construction centers back in later. Maybe they can locally pay for the construction goods? I don't know. These construction goods, let's take a look at the market prices. Yeah, just huge prices on a bunch of things. We get colonial exploitation, so we will come in and we will go for Sulawesi. We will probably not be getting the Mosque of Jene this episode, but we will just talk about it a little bit here. Uh, we are going to establish colony in Suzu, and what we want is we want to get an adjacency to Fuda Jalan so we can conquer them, conquer them, conquer them, and then get Eastern Mali. This is the plan, this is the way. Uh, we of course are clapping, uh, and by we, we mean mommy. Mommy is clapping uh, the Ottoman Empire here. Uh, combined with, you know, the nice timing of waiting for Egypt to be fighting them uh, before going for it. I think we will come in and we will swap over our stuff in all this as well. We're making a little bit of money. We'll re-add construction um, after Daddy sorts that out. Or he might not. Maybe the aristocratic revolt wins. Maybe we'll have a new Daddy. Or Mommy, as it were. Yeah, poor kebab, getting wrecked, really wrecked here. Um, overall, very, very, this this start feels very nice uh, relative to some of the testing I've done. Um, I think we're making a little bit more money with the, uh, the wood focus start, um, but it's pretty close to like being more tool focused. Um, these places are pretty profitable. They're not fully employed. These places are real profitable. We do have that in the queue. We have a bunch of uh, stuff ready to finish. Looks like they will get enforced on here. And, uh... <laughs> poor kebab. This is a kebab sandwich. We're actually going to take a screenshot. Because this is a bit funny. <laughs> now, they peace out with Egypt. I think we will maybe switch to start advancing the front. Actually, let's advance this front. Oop, let's not advance that front. Let's advance this. Let's bring on someone our own size. Yeah. <laughs> Kebab, uh, we're still going to enforce on them, it looks like. We're going to be making a ton of money at that juncture. So after this finishes right here, what we will do is we'll come in, we'll re-add two of these construction centers. We'll probably look to add another one here. Now let's look at the construction efficiency here. Yeah, we still have a bunch of turmoil here. So we eventually want to move the capital either here or to Thessaly. Um, but for now, I guess we'll just leave it. And the Ottomans are about to get enforced on here. We'll give them the credit. And we get Return Thessaly and get Macedonia. All of this feels big nice. This is already incorporated. We'll incorporate this. And this has been our starting steps. We have gotten to being pretty big Greece here. Um, you know, 
in just, uh, what is this, 12 years, we've managed to grab back three states. Uh, so we are, you know, in good shape here in regards to progressing towards the nation formation of uh, Great Britain, or sorry, not Great Britain, uh, Byzantium. I don't know why I said Great Britain. That's the weirdest take. Uh, the GDP cranked up quite a bit. You know, uh, SOL has been kind of constant. We've increased our pop a lot. And soon it's going to be incorporated pop. Next episode, we will be going for this. But in this episode, we have used the coin laws to reform some of our economic stuff. We've gone through an early industrialization effort. Not quite as much construction as I wanted, but we do have quite a bit of construction in the queue and we're making a lot of money. So we're going to be poised to pop off on that front. Um, a little ambitious. We actually don't have really the pop to kind of support that level of construction. You know, that many people in the subsistence farms to kind of allow us to like, pop off in that way so that was maybe a bit optimistic at the start to say a hundred um we have also enacted our expansion plan which has featured you know gaining a native interest here a native interest here and a native interest over here that we can utilize to expand while we declare use our single interest that we have to try and colonize here in suzu with the attempt of going for the mosque of jinnah here in eastern mali we also have utilized daddy who is still daddy um uh, to try and uh, use him to fight the Ottoman Empire for us. He's helped us on one occasion. On the second occasion, we needed to load because he revved. Poor dad. Um, you know, having some problems there. It's okay, though. He's still our father. Um, and then also, we have just been, you know, consistently going after Kebab. We will continue to be doing this. He's paying us war reps now. We should have taken this on the first war. Um, in terms of mistakes, uh, we should have put that in on the first war before asking daddy to help because apparently those uh war goals stay in um the war reps would have helped a lot we're getting 8k from war reps you know this is what's going to allow us to really take off in construction here um but uh other than that you know um uh, big nice joining him and uh he's helping us out now i hope you enjoyed feel free to like comment subscribe and have a good one